Yes. Okay, sorry about the recording thing. Good afternoon and welcome to our Small Business 101 interview with the experts. My name is Ronnie Holder Diefenbach and I'm the Executive Director for the Economic Alliance and I will be conducting these interviews. This will be a short weekly discussion that the Economic Alliance will be hosting to discuss topics important to small businesses in our region. These sessions will be short, five to 10 question interviews um, that we hope will answer some of your most important need to know questions. We will allow for time for questions at the end and encourage you to reach out to the Economic Alliance and or our ex industry experts to find out more about any topic you are interested in learning more about. Today, we will be learning about the LNI Risk Management Program, and we are excited to have Amanda Matz, Risk Management Consultant, who will share with us some great information about this program and how it will benefit your business. Welcome, Amanda. Can you share a little bit about your background, please? Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. My name is Amanda Matz. I work with Washington State Department of Labor and Industries. I'm a risk management consultant in the Division of Occupational Safety and Health, and I work in the consultation section. And that section is where we work mostly, well, we're solely with employers to educate there. I work out of the Kennewick office here in Eastern Washington. I have worked at Labor and Industries for 21 years. Um, recently, as a risk manager, I spent 14 years in collections as a lead trainer, working with employers to bring their accounts current if they had past due premiums or citations, and also in customer service. So I have a lot of experience talking to employers and understanding the hardships and how much they pay in premiums. Consultations are really unique here at Labor and Industries because we have, we're here solely for the employers and to educate and we provide these consultations and we're also available for other questions as well rather than just the full-on consultation all right well thank you um we're really excited to have you here to share more about um your program um specifically the risk management program so could you give us a little bit more of a basic overview of of what that is and um and what you guys can do to help small business Absolutely. So risk managers, we work with Washington employers and our goal is really to educate and help employers gain a better understanding for the labor and industry system and premiums they pay, how safety and claims management impact these costs and what tools are available to employers to keep their premium costs low. So as an employer, you can't control costs if you don't have a cost control program in place. Most of risk management is proactively getting these policies and procedures in place with your safety and claim management program. All right. Well, who is a risk management consul consultation for and what will the employer get out of that consultation? I think I just answered the wrong question for you there, Ronnie. So it, it's for um, <laughs> Washington employers, and we really work to bring the, the understanding of the labor and industry system and what the premium costs are. Okay. And if I'm an employer and I have you come in, tell me, can you step me through what that looks like and, you know, what the process is? Okay. So either you'll contact me for a consultation or I'll be doing outreach to a, um, to an employer to let them know what our program is and what we offer. We'll work with you one-on-one -on -one to schedule a consultation and for a time that works for everybody, we'll meet you um, how it's best to meet you for your needs, whether it be in person, virtually, or over the phone. Um, these consultations take about an hour, maybe depending more on how engaged the employer is in the discussion. So, so you do go out and you do meet in person at businesses, um, you know, and it takes about, you know, what are things that the business would need to have and have prepared for when you come and you want to do the evaluation or the consultation? Um, there's really nothing you have to prepare for. It's this kind of an organic conversation that we'll have about um, the five main parts of a risk management consultation. I'll ask you questions about 
a claim management program, if you have anything in place and what your claims management looks like. So if you do have policies and procedures around that, that would be great to bring. Um, if you don't have anything, that's fine too. I have samples that I can provide to employers on that. Um, I'll bring information about the premiums that you've paid to labor and industries, what your current rates are, your experience factor, as well as costs that you've had for injuries as well. So, There's not a lot you need to prepare for to see me. <laughs> That's good to know. I think that a lot of times, you know, just from conversations that we've had with businesses, I think it uh, even just talking about L and I and them coming to the work site or to my place of business, it could be a little bit stressful. And so always knowing, you know, what is it, you know, what do I need to prepare for? You know, are, are stressing out like the week before and making sure all of their decks are in a row and that they have all of their things together. And it's like, and then they, then the person gets there and they're like, oh no, we don't need any of that. <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh, I did all of this work for what? Um, so it's good. I think that to have that understanding and, and, that businesses um, can be prepared by just, you know, let being open and honest and letting them know what they have in place. You know, um, you meet with several businesses and, you know, through your consultation and through the work that you do, what is it, what is something that you get asked often um, from the small businesses? Something I get asked often is from small businesses who have new injuries. I get asked, should I keep an injured worker on salary or should I let them collect time loss benefits from labor and industries? I get asked that often. These employers will get notified by the department when there's a new claim and the early contact team will reach out to them and then they'll talk about it there and that's how I get them. Um, the answer of the question is really hard. It's case by case mm -hmm. for every business. It really depends on what their motivator is to keep an employee on salary or have them collect time loss. Lots of things to consider um, there with their goals. Are they wanting to help support the injured worker financially because the worker, they know they'd only get 60% to 75% of their income collecting time loss? Are they wanting to prevent the claim from being compensable? Are you trying to keep claim costs low? There's so many things to think about. How long will the injured worker be off of work? I mean, will it, how sustainable is it to keep them on salary? Will the injured worker have surgery? It, do you have a return to work plan in place? I mean, the return to work plan is really the first thing that should be thought of rather than keeping the worker on salary. Bring them back to work if they have restrictions and can return back to work in a modified position. That's the best case scenario. Um, to me, cap on salary, it's a tool for every employer and it should be considered on a case by case basis. I can help you go over all those questions and things to think about, but it's the employer's decision ultimately on what it is they choose to do. Is there any other common questions that you get that you'd want to discuss? <laughs> common questions I get, um, what can they do for safety and keeping their workers safe or how, let's see. Oh, they just get asked everything sometimes, but the, really the biggest one is that, is it financially a benefit to keep my worker on salary or allow labor and industries to pay time loss? Um, is there, you know, and I guess this is an added question um, that I'm going to ask. Um, is there programs to help um, employee if an employee is injured on the job and, you know, they have to come back and, and physical therapy might not, um, you know, if they're injured in one part of their job um, and they might not be able to go back to that type of work again. Is there a program or any programs available through LNI that help them be retrained, maybe with the same employer, but doing different duties? Um, so there are vocational programs that would go through the claim that could offer retraining and if that injured worker meets a certain qualifications and all of that program is approved, then there could be retraining um, for that worker. Um, we also have like, um, I guess it would really depend on how long are they, is it a permanent 
um, disability or a permanent change as well, Ronnie? Do you know what? What are you thinking? Oh, no, I, I was just thinking that um, in my past life, I was in workforce development. So I know that uh, we worked with the Division of Vocational, I can't talk today, Division of Vocational Rehabilitation. And then we also, there was some subcontractors out here in the area that worked with Elle and I to retrain people. And, and a lot of times, I mean, the employee, I guess in my mind, I look at it like we have a great employee who just happened to get hurt. Um, and, you know, or what if, you know, somebody, a great employee goes to work, um, gets injured and can no longer go in that, uh, in that position, but they're a great employee and I want to keep them on staff. And I have these other things that I think that they can do, but they need to be retrained to do so. So, I mean, I'm just thinking of, you know, I mean, a, a lot of times if an employer finds an, a uh, an employee that they really mesh with and they really get along with and they love their work ethic and all those types of things. And, you know, they want to make sure that they keep them on, on, even though they cannot do what they were hired to do, you know, is there, you know, I just was thinking, you know, is there programs? Cause I know in the past there are programs, but I, it's been, you know, 15 years since I was in that world. So I don't, you know, and things changed during that time. So I just, I didn't know if there were still things available. So there is still the vocational training rehabilitation, and that's really case specific. What an employer can do for injured workers that are off duty, um, their full duty, like temporarily, have a return to work program that you put in place to bring that worker back to work temporarily in the light duty position, modifying what their work is to fit what their restrictions are. Um, if you're able to do that, that's one of the best ways to control costs is having that light duty program, bringing them back to work. Then you'll reduce your, uh, reduce or eliminate time loss payments and possibly make or keep that claim as a non-compensable claim, which impacts your experience factor rating calculation less. There is the early return to work section within labor and industries that can work with employers one-on-one -on -one to create a job bank for different light duty job descriptions, help complete those light duty job descriptions, create policies for it that you would implement and train your employees on. That's um, really the most time that it's used is for these short term light duty positions for workers. But there are vocational retra retraining programs too if the workers needs fall into that category. Thank you. So I'm an employer and I first time ever, I, one of my, my uh, employees got injured. How do I effectively manage a claim? What is the process? What do I need to do? Oh my gosh, I've never dealt with this before. And here I am. What's next? Okay. Well, ideally, that you would do some proactive work before that worker gets injured. Um, it's fine and great, and you can make it work if you don't have anything in place. Um, we can kind of work with you on the fly as quickly as possible to figure out what to do and how you can develop those policies for return to work. Um, really, it's letting that worker know that when you go to the doctor, if you have restrictions, let me know what those restrictions are. I'm willing to work with you. I'm willing to get you back to work in any capacity possible. Um, so that when they go to the doctor, they're not um, responding to the doctor when they say, does your work have light duty? They're not immediately saying no because they were unaware of the ability to come back to work light duty. Um, when that claims happens, um, try to investigate what it was that caused the injury so that you can correct any hazards that caused it and prevent other employees from being injured in the same way. You don't want that to happen for sure. Um, back to um, your policies that you may have had or that you're getting in place really quickly when you have this injured worker, you'll have those job descriptions that you've thought ahead of advance and send it with the worker to the doctor. They'll ask the doctor if this job description is something that they can do within their limitations. They'll sign it off. And then that job description, you ask your worker to bring it back and then you can go ahead and offer a position in a light duty job. Um, most workers can return to work in a modified position immediately following an injury, which is 
amazing because all the costs for the claim are reduced at that point in time. There's lots of studies done that they'll return to work quicker, all in all, have lower medical costs if they return to work almost immediately. Something else the employers that they can do is they can ask the worker to check in with them after doctor appointments. We've touched on that a little bit before, but you as the employer, you don't have to just sit back and let it happen. Be involved with the claim. It's your claim also. Um, know that you do have protest and appeal rights and what those rights are. Anytime an order is issued by labor and industries, you have 60 days to request a protest. Um, protesting that decision the department made. There's an employer report of accident form that the department will ask you to complete. That's your opportunity to provide information of how the injury happened. Um, also, let us know if there's any concerns with the validity of the claim, provide accurate wage information. A lot can be, a lot can happen for the worker as well when they're filling out that report of accident. So if we have the employer and the injured worker providing wage information, we can get to the bottom of what the accurate wages are if it does become a compensable claim. Um, there's so much that we can talk about on um, claims management. It's best to schedule a consultation and we can get you talking about the different scenarios there. Thank you. Can you tell me what tools are available to employers? Absolutely. So we have those early return to work specialists that you can work one on one with to create um, the return to work policies, light duty job descriptions. Maybe you as an employer, you don't have a specific light duty job, which most don't. It's just a matter of getting a bunch of different little jobs or tasks and pulling it all together to make that light duty job description to fill up the workers day. We have the Washington Stay at Work program, which is a financial incentive program. It is a reimbursement program for employers who um, bring a worker back to work light duty, who have an approved light duty job description from the employer, not employer, from the um, provider. And then labor and industries will reimburse wages at that point that you've brought the worker back to work. You can get reimbursed up to $10,000 wages. Um, or 66 days, whichever comes first, for 50% of their base wages. Um, we Do you have, guys, go, oh, ahead. go ahead, I'm sorry. No problem. We have safety and health con consultants as well, and ergonomic consultants will do on-site visits for employers to check and see that you have your accident prevention program and if there's no hazards to your employer. It's really just like a, an extension of your safety program to ask us to come in and do these consultations. Safety can review your accident prevention program. They'll walk around the job site and point out any hazards that they see and give you tips or ideas of how to mitigate those hazards. Industrial hygienists can do the health portion of these consultations. They can do chemical use or storage. Are you doing the proper uses for those? Confined spaces and what tools and requirements are needed. Noise exposure or biological exposures and then air quality concerns. So they can come to your site and do noise or air quality monitoring if you have questions on it and it's all free. Ergonomists will come as well, and they work mainly with strain and sprain injuries and prevention of that. So any type of heavy lifting or repetitive stress injuries, that's where an ergonomist will come in to help you optimize your work for that. We have the Claim and Account Center for employers. The so employers can look at the Claim and Account Center 24 hours, seven days a week, and you can see any account information that you have there send secure messages to your account manager, ask for new rates or risk classes to be added. You can do the same with any injured worker claim you have. You can view every document that's gone in or out of a claim in the Claim and Account Center. There's more tools, I'm sure. The one last one I'm gonna talk about is the Verify a Contractor or Tradesperson tool. Um, it was generally, um, designed for verifying contractors or tradespersons, but you can use it for any employee, 
any employer out there. You can verify that they have an active workers' compensation account. You can see what their rates and experience factor are as well. There's lots of information that can be found. It sounds like there's a lot of tools. Um, I know you're talking about the different types of consultations that um, are offered to business, small businesses. Um, and I know um, one of the things that we've talked about, you know, in our previous webinars has been um, small businesses, you know, again, they think L&I and I, they think, oh, no, you know, if I bring them to my site, are they going to find, you know, is it going to involve a fine? What's going to happen um, when you do your consultations? Um, you know, and Mitch from Moses Lake, who does the um, the safety consultations, you know, he was like, we are not there to find you. You know, we, you know, you call us, you, you bring us in and you want, uh, you know, you're telling us that you want to have a safe environment, you know, so when we show up, if we see things that need to be fixed that can make your workplace ba better, or if it's, you know, in my, you know, it, it's out of compliance according to LNI standards. You know, we will tell you these things, but when we go there that first time, we are not there to penalize anybody or to find anybody. But we were, we are there because you brought us in because you're you want to have a safer workplace. So I think um, a lot of people, you know, when you think about consultations and that's inviting and bringing into my business, you know, that's going to be the automatic fear. But if we, you know, if, if Ella, you know, and Mitch did a good job, and I think you've done a good job of just sharing that, you know, you're there to help that you want to provide the information so that the, so the small businesses can be in compliance so that they can be successful so that hopefully they don't have a claim that they're coming to you because of the fact that one of their employees got injured. So I think it's, it's always good to have that part of the conversation and just to remind the small business, these are, you know, all of these consultants um, are tools to help you have a safer business. Um, it's there to help make a, an environment for your workers, um, a safe environment for your workers. And so that, you know, they know that when they go to the job site or go to the workplace that, um, you know, what they're doing in their everyday tasks, whether it's your chair, we talked about that, you know, or your mouse and the type of mouse and keyboard you're using, you know, it's, it's all, you know, it's all connected. So it definitely um, is, is important. Um, one of the right. things all that of our services uh, are free too. So there's not a whole lot other than your time. And if the safety or health consultant goes out there and finds a serious hazard, you are asked to correct that hazard. I would hope every employer wants to correct it anyways to keep their employees safe. But that is something that's out there that you would be asked to do. But there's not a monetary penalty that's associated with it from labor and industries. You can work with the consultant if you need more time to correct whatever that hazard is. They, they really try to be accommodating to what your needs are. Maybe you need to order a part to guard the machine and it's back ordered and it's going to take a while. They're understanding. You just have to communicate and, with them and let them know what it is you're trying to do to correct that hazard. Another thing I was going to ask you was um, about, you know, if I'm a brand new business. And I, or maybe I was, you know, set up and, you know, for the first year of my business, I have been independent. Now I'm getting ready to hire employees and I need assistance going through that process. Does Ellen and I have the tools or the people available to um, help a small business go through the process of, of doing what they need to do to register their business through your programs to make sure that they're doing it right? So are you talking about like the actual process, how they get their account open or like what to do once it's open and how to keep your employees safe and to follow all the different regulations that are out there for the employer? I, I think I think I'm speaking more towards the um, setting your business up with L&I. Um, I know that there's a lot of businesses who um, don't have employees because they don't know you know, how to go through that process. Um, and even when we're, we're starting, you know, um, creating an account, you know, how do you go about paying your, um, you know, your quarterly dues, you know, I mean, all of the different, you know, payments and things that you have to do. Is there, um, a, is there an entity or a part of your program um, that provides that service? 
So all of the service locations in the area have customer service specialists that they can reach out to to find out what the process is to open the business. Um, from my understanding, it's through their like my DOR account where they mm -hmm. fill out a new application and ask to have employees. Once that gets sent over to Labor and Industries, then the account manager gets assigned the assignment to open up the account. And that account manager will work with the employer with questions they have, also ask about what it is that they're doing to assign the actual rates. And from there, then they'll get informational informa information packets on what it is to have an employer and what employee, what it is as an employer to have employees and what your responsibilities are. Um, there's so many different sections and facets of L&I that employers do need to work with from there, but there's different parts everywhere that you can reach. You can check with me and risk management and I can get you on board with what how to start a claims management program, give you a general overview of what rates are, why you pay those rates, how often you report the rates, um, also tell you about the experience factor modification, how you grow your own experience factor, lots of information that I can provide to employers as well. Um, I really enjoy working with newer employers at first because they, there's so much to know and I can give them little bits and pieces and try to guide them in the right direction. I think that that's a great resource. And um, many people kind of fumble through it, you know, and, and trying to figure out all of the different things. And, you know, we have the Small Business Development Center here where, you know, we can help them kind of guide them through the process. But I think that it's, you know, if they don't know about our organization or they don't know about other entities that also can help through that process. I think it's always good to know that there's people that are on your team that that's part of what they do and um, and that they can they can help and ask or answer questions and and um, you know in your our previous um, webinar that we did on um, the construction industry. You know I think when you did those uh, experience ratings and shown how the experience rating tied into you know what your being charged, you know, and I don't know all the specific lingo, um, but um, I think that, you know, it's, I think it's a, it's an important correlation for small businesses to understand that. And um, almost like your regular insurance that you buy for your vehicles, you know, your credit rating is going to also be included in how, you know, much you pay for your uh, rates. So I, you know, there's just a lot of different things that play into it. And I just, I just think that, you know, making sure that we share all these resources is just super important. Yeah, the understanding of how the rates and the experience factor modification, that's really, really big for employers to at least have a general idea. I mean, don't be afraid to have a claim filed. Most medical only claims don't impact your rates or go into that experience factor calculation at all. I, I have heard a lot from employers or from other people that they were told to just go to the doctor and bring me the clinic bill, don't file a claim. That's not the best thing to do for sure. One, it's illegal to suppress a claim. That's what we call it at least is claim suppression. Mm -hmm. And two, you're, you're kind of throwing money away. You're already paying for this industrial insurance coverage. You're required to let your worker file that claim. And like I said, if it's medical only, it's not going to impact your your bottom line or your premiums, most likely anyway. I mean, if it's a huge, huge medical only claim, then yeah, it's going to have some impact, but a small one that an employer may consider paying the clinic bill for, definitely not. Good to know. So Amanda, if I asked you, what is something that every employer in Washington, what should they do? What would you say? <laughs> so it's a shameless plug for sure on um, having a risk management consultation. Um, do that, get your return to work plans in place. Also get a strong safety program, um, focus on injury prevention and there'll be less injuries and fewer claims to manage. So work with labor and industries 
schedule for a risk management consultation, schedule for a safety and or health consultation. We'll work with you, get you basics, get you started if you're new. If you have an established business, we may be able to point things out that you haven't thought of before. Um, there's just take advantage of those consultation services that Labor and Industries has. If I wanted to, if I called you today, and said, hey, Amanda, I want to have you come to my business and do a consultation. How long does it usually take to get that scheduled? I um, try to schedule as quickly as possible. It really depends on how far I have to travel and how much time I need in my day for the consultation for how long out. I would like to think I could schedule you within seven days. Um, it really depends on what I have going on, but I I want to get someone scheduled right away. There's been times where I do it the next day with employers, um, depending on my availability. So hopefully we could schedule something as soon as possible and something that works for you. If you are an established business with um, quite a bit of premium and rate information out there and injuries that I would need to research, there's some data that I would pull that it takes at least 24 hours to get. So then, there are limitations for that, but generally, you know, we could do them pretty quickly. Right. That's good because a lot of times, you know, it could be a month out or it could be two months out and then there's an injury, you know, or something happens that, you know. Or by and, that time uh, you forget you've even asked for it. So that, yeah, exactly. we try to get to you as quickly as possible. Exactly. Okay. So I know that you briefly mentioned this earlier. But I'm going to ask it again, just because there might have been people who missed it. But does any of the programs and services that you shared with us today cost anything for the employer to access? They do not. They're already paying for them with their quarterly premiums that they pay. So there's no additional cost to have a consultation to work with the early return to work section to do a stay at work reimbursement request. No additional costs. They're free to the employer. That's great. Free is good. It sure is. <laughs> and it's good, good programs to be able to access. So we're to our final question. Amanda, can you share with us what you perceive as being the biggest takeaway for our small businesses if they participate in your program and how the program can help their small business? Oh, that's a tough one, Ronnie. There's so many things. It depends on where the business is at and what they have. But um, understanding about the return to work program and how that impacts the worker and the employer and ultimately impacts their their rates later on, that is probably one of the bigger impacts for the claims management portion. And then the safety portion as well. So many employers don't realize that they even need a written accident prevention program or what that is and that they need to train their employees on that the accident prevention program and how to document those. There's a really big thing from all the different sections that we talk about in risk management for takeaway, but I think those are the two top for me. As I put myself on mute and <laughs> and my lips are moving and nobody's hearing. Um, thank you again for your time and don't don't forget, um, everybody who's out there watching, or if you're not watching now, hopefully you're going to watch on demand. Uh, but don't forget to check our um, Facebook page on a weekly basis to find out more about our upcoming interviews and workshops. If you would like to make an appointment with our small business advisor, Lou Blakeney from the Small Business Development Center to talk about your idea, your new business startup, or if you're an existing business needing help with a marketing strategy or financial analysis, the SBDC offers free confidential, free 
small business services. So contact us at 826-5107 to schedule an appointment. We also have a lot of LNI resources here available at the Economic Alliance that we can uh, distribute. So if you're needing posters for your, your uh, uh, conference rooms or your lunch rooms for your employee information, wage information, um, as well as several other guides, we have that available here to get to you. Just give us a call as well. Um, our next workshop is April 27th. Um, I want to own my own business. So if you're in that idea stage, please uh, register uh, to that, for that workshop, which is for idea-based or new business startups. Um, I also will put a link to the register uh, registration in the chat, as well as Amanda's um, email address. So you can reach out directly to her to um, schedule an appointment. Um, thank you again, Amanda. I appreciate you being here today. I appreciate you taking the time um, to, to be here, to participate in this program, or to share with us about your program and the services that um, you do as a risk management consultant. So thank you very, very much. Thanks for having me, Ronnie. I appreciate the opportunity and the chance to speak to the businesses there in Okanagan County. Um, I also, I have a coworker who works in Region 5 as well, Yesenia Sabidra. You can reach out to either one of us and we're happy to have schedule a consultation or answer any questions you might have as an employer. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Till the next Small Business 101 interview. Thank you all.